the meeting. This is a meeting of the Central Business Architecture Committee. Um, there's, I believe, first just an open session. If there's any comments from the public about any other issues besides what we're going to review tonight. If there's no comments of that, we'll just move ahead with the presentation. If he's ever wants to introduce himself from the You want to open the public hearing? That's what I implied, yes. Okay. I don't I'm determined I I don't share that often. Um, I just want to make sure we're, so we're covered. So I'm yes. Andrew Crystal. Um, it's our company, O'Connor Development, uh, that will be developing townhouses at the St. John Campus property right now. Um, the church is not part of the project. As Charles goes through the plans, we can show you site plan. There's a parking lot that is part of the parcel we'll be purchasing that's not part of the project we're applying for permits for tonight, but we've shown conceptually three duplexes on that, just so that the planning board and everyone else had an idea of what could go there. Um, so we're proposing 23 townhomes, all individual homes, separate entrances, all with garages, half with two car garage, half with one car garage. There'll be market rate condominiums. Um, one of the things that is a little change from the application that went in um, because we're in the central business zone, the plan that was approved by the planning board meets the requirements. There's a commercial space on the ground floor of the first building. Charles will show you when we put the site plans up. And the elevations for that plan that were approved are what we presented. Um, the city's looking at changing the zoning and central business to more form-based. And if they do, we think that uh, we would come back and make the case that this is on the perimeter. It's really a transition between central business and URC, um, that it's a, a good candidate for form base and that it's inappropriate for the commercial space. Carolyn's heard us say that. I think she's supportive of that if the zoning changes. So what we'd like to do is present a slightly modified elevation if that commercial space on the ground floor goes away. And you'll see when Charles presents the plans, it would change that elevation a little bit. So we want to present both, get your comments, and hopefully have either one approved, the one that's approved by the planning board now, and then if they change the zoning and modify our site plan permit, it would be nice if we didn't have to come back here and show the elevation again. So I'll let Charles go through the plans and then we can answer any questions. Hi, thanks. So I'm yeah, Charles Roberts, King Real Architects. Um, after the meeting here this evening, um, I'm going to go through sort of the zoning orientation and the maps just to give you remind. I know you've looked at this um, proposal already, the submission, but I'm just going to go through, so do, go through the zoning map again to just, just orient uh, our project relative to the zoning in town. Um, we'll take a, I, I have some context photos of the site to run through and then I'll, then I'll present our project um, and be, be ready to take any kind of questions. So as Andrew says, it's, uh, we have 23, uh, 23 townhouse units, market rate, um, with garages on the uh, on the first floors, and then living above um, in, in the uh, the central business district. There's no parking required, but we're providing about on, on average about parking a half space, a parking space and a half per unit, covered on, under garages. Um, so this is this is our zone. The yellow is the is the URC. The lavender is the um, is the um, is this working? Just barely. Um, the lavender is the uh, central business district. That that upper sort of trapezoidal shape is our site. The uh, those two lower triangles down uh, squares down below are, are the site Andrew was referring to before, where we might put a, a couple of duplexes on there. Nothing was designed for that yet. It's divided into two because half of that lot is in URC, half of the lot is in central business, which kind of is emblematic of the whole site. It's very transitional, it kind of toothy. You can see the, uh, the central business uh, lavender toothing into the yellow. So it really is a, a transitional zone. The, uh, the, 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 the classic sort of historic downtown fabric starts to um, you know, move into smaller buildings that are a little, left, little further apart divide, you know, um, uh, with parking lots in between as, as, the, as that whole neighborhood starts to blend into the, uh, the residential character of, of URC, uh, Holly Street, Pomeroy Terrace, um, and Phillips Place on down that on down the line there. Um, just 
to give a little context, these are, I know you're, everybody knows the church very well, but this is St. John Cantus right on the corner, uh, a view from Holly Street, and then across that parking lot, um, across Phillip Street. The two lower photographs show uh, a view of the parish hall, which is going to be demoed, and then the rectory on the bottom right. Um, I don't plan to be sensitive to them that are coming in on site um, for a later in the presentation. These are uh, the rectory again on the upper left. Um, on the uh, on the right, there's a big tree. There's a there are a series of mature trees along the northern boundary of the site, which we're saving. Um, we'll, we can show those more in the site when we get there. Um, can't really duplicate those sorts of things, so we're safe. We're working for design around those. What's the middle photograph there? The middle photograph is a garage right along the fence line. So this is the fence right between our site and the post office parking lot, and that garage basically sits right on that wall. So that's coming down. Um, this panorama shot is sort of gets it all in. There's here's St. John right over here on the left. That's the rectory hall that's coming down. There's the garage you were you were just asking about, which is coming down, and then the uh, and then the parish hall. Um, just a couple more a couple more views um, uh, of of St. John uh, across Phillips uh, Street to give you a sense of some of the neighborhood houses. There's a there's there's a cute little red barn which obviously is is, is staying. There's a and then a uh, kind of a Victorian. Uh, double-decker house there that you can see, which is also backing up to our, to our lot. Um, views uh, down down Phillip Street and down Holly towards Root Street. Um, these are these are some of the buildings and the commercial buildings in the in the, uh, the immediate area, the the arts center, and then panning around to the um, I don't like my glasses also. <laughs> And then uh, this 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 image here on the uh, on, on the uh, the top right is kind of interesting because it's it's between the post office and that antique store, and uh, and there's we'll be getting you know you, we're going to get snapshots snapshot views of our project um, you know through those through those sort of gaps in in, in the street and uh, I have some elevations to to sort of bring that bring that uh, closer into view. Um, here on the, on the lower left are, are uh, some of the theme building, a couple of the theme buildings directly across the street. Again, they sort of, they're sort of they're standalone buildings that, that are transitioning into that more uh, residential fabric of the URC uh, district. This is some of the typical residential uh, architecture that you see in the neighborhood in which our building is, tries to refer to and emulate without, without necessarily duplicating, but, but our, our, our buildings try to be in the spirit of this and, and, and uh, harmonize with them uh, without necessarily duplicating them. So there are a series of Victorian and, and colonial, uh, you know, straightforward but, but lovely houses, nicely detailed with porches and trim and, uh, and, and nice proportions, um, clapboards um, and shingles usually. Um, here's our, this is our site plan, uh, demo site plan. So the, the, the three buildings in blue are the buildings that are being demolished. Uh, the rectories on the left, that little garage is in the middle, and, and the parish hall is on the right. And the uh, uh, St. John itself is the, the red building at the bottom. Um, I, sorry, but I have, I'm a little hard of hearing, okay. even with my hearing aids. Okay. When you're looking that way, it's okay. kind of harder. If you if you face towards us, I can okay. hear you better. I'm not okay. sorry. No, not a problem. Yes, but no. I'll, actually, I'll just look at the computer screen. I can hear you well when you're too right. much ukulele music. <laughs> <laughs> More than too much drums. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so here, here's our site design plan. Here, um, this is the, the northern edge of the site. Um, the, uh, the post office parking lot back in here. These are a couple of those existing trees I was pointing out, which we're saving. Um, and then this is a, a new uh, landscaped edge along along this side of, 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 of the access driveway, which will help screen um, our buildings. The, the, the first floor of all these buildings have garage doors in them, sort of facing out this way, which you'll see in a, a, a later image. But the uh, uh, the trees and landscaping will help screen that from from bridge bridge streams are coming down here. Um, so there's, this is an existing curb cut. The access drive comes into the site here. 
Um, you enter into the, the units through the garages or through front doors in, the, in these middle two units here or down a, a garden access way and then into the sides of, of the end units. Um, the road comes around uh, and, then, and then makes a, a dog leg in here so that um, uh, um, so, so that it, 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 for efficient kind of circulation and also for the uh, so the, the fire trucks can come in and make their turning radiuses. There, yeah, uh, this gray, this lighter, darker, kind of like a beigey color in here is a rollover uh, paving surface that will sort of act as both pedestrian um, access, but also with uh, to accommodate the uh, the turning radius of the fire trucks as they move through here. This has all been reviewed with the fire department got their, their sign up on here. This uh, this section right here is, is actually an easement on, on the neighbor's property. This will be for ingress only, so that uh, to minimize the amount of traffic coming out of the site and, and adding to the, the, the traffic on, on Phillips Street. Um, so again, these, these units are laid out so that you pull into the, you pull into the front of the units with the garages. There's garages and, and a flex space on the first floor. The second floor has uh, has living living spaces, kitchen, dining, living spaces, and then bedrooms on the third floor. And these little rectangular areas here are private gardens that'll be landscaped. So it's a real nice kind of you know progression from the public entry into the houses themselves into these back you know private areas, private gardens. Um, this this whole site is also stepping up about it steps up about ten feet from Holly Street to the back area of the site in here. So these buildings are, are, are stepping up with the site and each and these buildings step um, a, a two feet from from unit from the first unit to the last unit and, and steps up with the hill as well. So it does it helps modulate the scale of the architecture I think and it can become site responsive in a very nice way. This is a, uh, a 3D view. So these are those, uh, th this is what we're proposing along in here. These are our, our six buildings. This is the access drive along in here, um, Holly Street, St. John, um, Cantus. Um, this is Phillips Place right along in here. And you get a sense of how as you're coming down Bridge Street, you'll, you'll get these views through these, through these parking lot egress and ingress uh, access drives to, to these buildings beyond. And it's going to it does, it's going to do a really nice job of tying in this residential uh, neighborhood back in here to, to, to wrap around this edge and kind of cradle St. John in a way. And then create, I think, a really nice gateway with these, with these two buildings here. One of the things about the Central Business District is that uh, the, the, we want to have, there's no setback um, for the front, the front fronts of these buildings. But what we're actually asking for is uh, is, a, is, is a, an allowance to create, uh, to push these buildings back from the street um, about 25 or 30 feet. So, and what that does is it makes, it makes the edge of this building here parallel to the church. It opens up this area here on the site. We've designed in um, a little pocket park for the public. And, uh, and so it creates sort of a landscape um, entry gateway and also just, I think, some relief um, and I have an image a little later that will sort of show how that's, how that's working. Um, these are the, the elevations. The top elevation is along is across Holly Street. Um, you see the St. John there on the right. Our building is on the, on the left as it's facing out onto the street. There's a, there's a, a, a little area. This is the, uh, the commercial area here. We see this red awning sort of shape. There's a, so that could be a small office, small professional office. Um, uh, and then the, and then the, uh, the living areas are up above um, bedrooms, kitchen, living, dining for that unit. And so the, and so the idea with this, with, uh, with this is to sort of bring in some of the language of the buildings that I showed you, the neighborhood buildings that are they're, they're common throughout the, throughout the neighborhood. This, this street here, uh, the, this elevation here is the north elevation. So this is an abstraction of, of the building as, of the buildings as they're facing uh, Bridge Street. You see how they, they step up with the, with the site. Um, the two middle units uh, have single car garages. The end units have, have a two car garage. And uh, it's kind of a, it's a, 
The forms themselves are, are, are balanced in a symmetrical way around the central, uh, central form of the building, but they, they step up with the site, and so you get a sense of, uh, it, 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 I think it helps give some motion and some interest to the buildings, and also accommodates the reality of the site, which is that it's stepping up the hill. Um, and again, there will be, you know, there will be screening along that edge wall, so you won't be looking directly at garage doors. You'll see these buildings kind of floating above that landscaped edge um, from, from Bridge Street. These are the, the two elevation ideas. Maybe I'll zoom in on these that, uh, that Andrew was referring to. So the elevation on the left is is for is to meet the, the current zoning um, for central business, where we have a commercial entity on the right, small business, professional business office on the right, and then the entry uh, front door um, in, in the center of the building, and then with the living spaces above, a deck kind of a, a porch coming out from the second floor above that entry portico, and the bedrooms on the third floor. And uh, this, in this in this instance, it only has a single car garage because we in order to to make all the egressing work out of a unit, we have to have two ways out of the townhouse unit, and one of them can't be the business uh, the business use. So it creates a slightly different a different plan. Which if we which if we move to the form based zoning, the elevation on the right um, allows us to to get back into the two car garage uh, design, so that the entry slides over to the right. And it becomes sort of balanced, asymmetrical design. Similar elements, but the um, with, with the with the, the, the porch portico and, and the upper level sort of uh, entry out onto the uh, or, or door out onto the porch, and then the uh, we have a two-car garage, and, and the business use goes away. So, what, what I guess what we be what we be asking for is if, it, if it's is, is sort of tentative approval. For either one of these approaches, um, based on um, whether or not the zoning changes, just so we don't necessarily have to come back for a second round with, with, um, unless we need to. So that was the thought of that. Each one of those uh, units, the, they appear like. Um, oh, I kind of lost the picture there. Yeah, I'm coming um, back. I'm coming back. <laughs> What I was just asking is, each of those units is the building encompasses three units. Four. Is that what they brought up? There's just four, four in each. Yeah. Okay, it's, it's hard to see. Yeah, let, let me zoom in on that. Also, we, we did bring <coughs> architectural drawings. Um, we, we could roll out on the table. That would, would that be helpful? Probably. Oh, yeah. So you oh, can see it. Okay. So there's four. These are these are. I, uh, I got you now. Yeah. Double garage I, I door. Seen it before. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, so the, the middle, the two smaller middle units each share a single car garage. Right. The end units have the double car, the right. double gar yeah. garage. And then their front door is next to the garage door. Right. So the, yeah, the middle, the middle units. <coughs> give it some more. Oh, so we have like a one bedroom. It's a smaller unit. It's like a one bedroom or something. Well, it's no, it's, it's a the middle room. units are about nineteen hundred square feet. The end units are about twenty one hundred. So it's two feet narrower. But it's got the same program. So here's the first floor. So what? Yeah. So the, the middle units, in order to, you know, the front door has to be here. You got to, to get in. So the front door is here. The garage is off the side. So we can only get uh, a one one single car. car. So, but here where we've got the two car garages. We can actually enter into the units from the side rather than the front. So that's why we're. So that that's. Sort of how the geometry that lays out. So on the end units, the entries are always on the eaves side. Right. Okay. Yep. And where are the second? Oh, that's the second egress. Right. Well, that the second egress is actually through the flex space here. Okay. That, this is a. These, these are going to be sprinkler buildings, so that's a. This is a. Oh, that's just a closet. That's just a sprinkler closet. Yeah. 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 Have you thought about keeping the rectory and incorporating that, uh, rehabbing it, renovating it, and incorporating it into the design of the 
of these townhomes. We, we did look at that early on and it restricted the development of the rest of the site too much. In, in what way? If you look at where it sits on the site, it uses up about over a third of, of the footprint of the land. So we would lose eight or ten units by doing that. Well, what was your question? Oh, I asked if they had considered um, renovating, rehabbing and renovating the rectory oh, okay. rather than demolishing it. There's a, a mention in the, uh, the information that came through us, Carolyn, yeah. and I know it's not our purview, but what's the deal with the um, demolition on the rectory house? So um, the um, demolition uh, review, because the Central Business District is all within the um, jurisdiction of the Central Business Architecture Committee, um, and that's by design, the requirement is that you would, um, the committee has to approve a replacement building for something that's being demolished. So you couldn't just demolish to build a parking lot. Um, and we're hoping that it's not the result that's happening on King Street after all these years. We're, <laughs> but we're actually, hoping that what? that's not the result that's happened on King Street after all these years, after the review of the, you know, the other Catholic Church on King Street. Um, so you have the jurisdiction to say, yes, you can demolish this building because you're building something else that adds to the vibrancy of the street front um, and, and to the character of the neighborhood. Um, so it's not about historic preservation. It's about um, enhancing the character of downtown. Yeah. So, if, so you couldn't say that you would prefer to delay demolition. No. That part is only under historical commission review for things outside of the central business district. Yep. But theoretically, if we if we found that the directory was historically significant, we could deny a permit to demolish it. That's not your jurisdiction in the central business district. Yep. I was just curious. Yeah. None of these buildings are on the historic register either. I don't know if that makes a difference or not in terms of the way the historic looks at demolition noise. It, it does. I mean, if something is on the National Register, um, that certainly in, um, is actually a check in the favor of um, preferably, um, you know, preserved. Yeah. But um, the, um, it's not the only element that's required uh, under that jurisdiction. But again, that doesn't apply because it, we're in the central business right. district. Okay. Um, so, you know, you're, you would look at street front and neighborhood vibrancy and the replacement of the building. How does it add to the character of the neighborhood? Um, and um, so that, that's what you're, um, and then everything, you know, any of the other questions about historic structures really goes, it is not part of your review. So does that mean that, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry to digress because I'm not sure it's relevant, but I'm, I'm curious. Does that mean that that in the central business that there is no protection for historical preservation? There's like there no demolition review like there is right. outside, right. and there's no um, requirement or a provision that a building um, be delayed demolition right. by okay. I was just a year. I, never, right. I think this is the first time that's ever come up in, for, before this committee. And so I, I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, the rectory is a really, you know, it's, it is, it's a really nice building. And, um, you know, I just think it's a shame to, to lose it as we continue to lose homes all over the place. I said, it's, I think it's a shame that there isn't a demolition delay within central business. Uh, well, it's, it's an issue for another yeah. time. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you're, you know, I know you haven't delved in um, deeply, um, probably as you want to on this, but can you explain, I just, um, I noticed that on the uh, rendering, you um, altered the window patterning on the Holly Street side in the transition from the first floor commercial unit to the 100% residential piece. Can you describe a little bit the... Yeah, um, the, why, why that is. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, it, I probably didn't do a good job of it. I was, it, has, it has to do 
with, uh, with, uh, oops, sorry. It, it, ha it has to do with um, adding that second garage bay and, and, getting, and, and getting the required egress out of the, out of the unit. Um, and, I, and I apologize for not having floor plans for this, but let's see if I can somehow get this. Um, so, so on the in the building on the left, which is which is the, uh, which is which is for the design for the business district zoning, um, there's a there, there's a garage bay on the left. It would, it would be like it would be like one of these middle units. <laughs> so there's a, uh, uh, a garage bay um, on, on the left, and then a door that would come in, and then and then that central entry courtyard would be right here, and then and then, this, and then what we're calling a flex space here would actually be the business occupancy. So what happens what happens in the form based uh, in the form based elevation on the right um, is we want to get our two-car garage back. So in order to do that, um, we, we, when we do that, we lose this hallway, and we go back to a plan that looks more like this. And in this plan here, the entryway has to be off-center in, in order to enter into the space. So that's why on the right, that, that whole entry portico moves over to the right. And then those, those two windows you see to the left of the entry would be windows into the garage. The, uh, the, the window coming out Onto the onto the portico on the second floor would be would be basically coming out here at the stair landing onto that porch roof here. So this would be that this would that's okay. This would be that that porch roof below, and there would be a door here that, that enters out onto that enters out onto that porch. So that door here would be the door you're seeing. Uh, right here, so it basically takes that whole that whole element and, and shifts it off center, and so it becomes an exercise of sort of working with a kind of a, of a, of a balanced asymmetry in that elevation. As long as we're coming back to this, I was going to wait till your presentation was finished. But is there <clears throat> any reason why you couldn't have more windows on the second floor in the Version on the right, so that it would look more symmetrical. Um, it's possible. We, we, if we get into the design of that unit, and that's something that the you feel we should look at, we can. Is Rob correct? These E or side elevations we're looking at on this plan here, Charles. Excuse yes. me. Um, they are not representative of the side plans you're showing there. No. So these. These elevations would be. Um, uh, let, me get, let me get out the, uh, the site plan. Those those are the elevations of the buildings between the. Uh, there, there's so this would be right on, on this. Here, so these right there are these little narrow slots here. So you know we, we separated these buildings for the for the fire distance of ten feet, and so we and so we don't have to uh, we don't have to fire rate them. Uh, so we can have so we can have unprotected openings, but we're allowed 15% window openings when we're within for within 10 buildings within 10 feet of each other. So those are minimal windows on the sides of the buildings where they're facing in towards each other. And so those are basically um, like clear story windows that would be positioned above the bed wall. So they're not you're not, you'll never really see those windows from the street anywhere. They're facing in towards one another, but on the side. Before we start to get critical of the elevations, why don't we let you finish your whole presentation? Okay. And then uh, I'm sure we're going to have more questions okay. about the exterior. Yep. Um, so these are, this is the materials board, um, which I have a, a larger copy of here if you want to look at it. So it's a very simple palette of materials. Um, board and batten, uh, clapboards, uh, asphalt shingles on the roof, and then and black uh, fiberglass clad windows, and uh, six-inch exposure on the clapboards, which is which is a traditional 
the exposure you know, common throughout the area, and then the board in Batten. So the uh, um, it looks like looks like the line were dropped out of here, but the the board in Batten would be in this upper area here, and then and then clabber below, and then the whole center area is clabber with trim. And the idea is to is to paint the. Uh, the trim and the, uh, the the window trim, the corner boards, and, and body color, um, the solid color, all, all one color. So you you, you read the forms um, at dominant over the uh, over sort of the trim work of, of, of the buildings. Um, but as you get into the detail, you would you would see the the window trim, the freeze band trim, um, uh, freeze boards, and, and, and what you need. But it just it actually it, it, it's kind of a of a, of a way of of accenting the forms rather than the outlines of the forms themselves. So it's kind of playing a game with with traditional uh, trim and siding and color and form to create uh, an architecture that's, that, that, that recognizes its antecedent, but at the same time is is is, is um, its own expression to its its own, its own thing. I assume this is an example of the window, but this is actually how they. Yeah. Right, yeah. The little one on the, on the bottom. So yeah, on the top. right, yeah. This was just something that's so, something like, we, uh, just to show you. Yeah, exactly. Okay. The board and batten detail, the, the battens are, are they uh, like a cement uh, yeah. material also? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm just curious, I, what, what do you call this style? Because, um, you know, your garage doors have some, you know, mutton patterns in the garage. Doors, the upper windows are very contemporary looking. Um, I just don't get a sense of. You say you're trying to fit in with the surrounding areas. I would have expected to see more articulation in the windows, and and I think what you were implying with painting the trim out the same color as the siding, you, you're making the building look more contemporary. By eliminating those trim patterns that are more traditional, right? Yeah, and I think I, 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 the idea is is to be is, is to sort of recognize and, and pay homage to the to, to the traditional way of building with, with the trim and with the side patterns, but 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 um, at the same time recognize that this this is this is new. This is about modern aesthetic, a modern, a contemporary way of living, contemporary lifestyle, maximizing light and, 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 and opening <coughs> to a building and not necessarily um, uh, uh, cluttering, I don't, or, or cluttering the space with lots of mullions and, and breaking up the view, but just to let the, you know, let it, let it be really open and light and airy on the interior of the buildings and then, uh, and then, uh, and then express that on the exterior with, you know, in, in, in simple forms, in simple shapes. Um, uh, I don't disagree with your comment about about the the, sch <laughs> the schizophrenia with the doors, and that's something that, that maybe we, we, should, we should look at because this is this is this is more of like an arts and crafts kind of, of a garage door, and this is this is this is more of a of a reduced kind of neoclassical. Um, uh, expression. Okay. So, how much taller are these buildings than, say, the average home that's in the that's in the neighborhood? Um, They're not taller at all. Oh, it's the high? same height. Thirty-five feet. They have to be a minimum of thirty feet for central business. Many of the homes in that neighborhood are two full floors and a full attic above, so they're higher than thirty-five feet. Yes, I remember we got a letter from. Tomasico, is that her name? Yeah. Yeah, that she wanted um, distributed. And there was something about, she said something about the heights of these buildings that she thought were hot, you know, were going to be higher than a lot of the homes in the area. And I just thought, well, if that's the case, and, um, you know, this is having a more contemporary look already without, um, you know, the trim and with these different, with the windows that, um, yeah, it won't blend in as well. 
So the heights are comparable to the, um, I think it's probably a perception. Um, and the perception is probably partly due because of the elevated, elevated. site. Yeah. So the, so the building are, are the building isn't taller, but the, the site is higher up. Right. So it looks like it's towering over yeah. the other buildings. I mean, these images give you a sort of a sense of, of, of the general height of, of a lot of these buildings, and and you know it, the, the 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 third the third floor spaces are you know in, in the neighborhood do tend to be either dormers or or, or in the roof shape, and we. We are we are elevating um, you know, our, our wall height to get a full third floor in here. But we did along along this one wall edge in here. We are dropping the uh, the the eave height of, of around the sides of this middle block here, and then and then creating a dormer to accommodate the full third floor there. So um, in that to kind of bring the scale down. And, and just to um, um reiterate my response to um, um, Mr. Mosco that um, the central business, the allowance for height in central business is up to 55, I'm uh, sorry, 70, 70 feet now. The um, height allowances in the urban residential C districts so or the surrounding residential districts is 55 feet. So you can go much taller even in the residential district than, um, than what this is even proposed in in the uh, central business. So what was the height? 39 feet. From top to? 35 feet, the way the city measures it to the median of the roof. Okay. That was, that was they use? Right. Yeah. So that's the, the overall height of the peak, like that. Right. So part, part of what's driving that is is there's no requirement for parking, as Charles said, but we felt the market would want enclosed parking. So that's raised everything up a floor. Otherwise, it would be two stories sitting on the ground with a second floor. And the neighborhood wanted that too. They, they were concerned about parking as it is. And so to go right. in, to a project with 23 units and no on site parking at all. Well, I really respect that. I mean, that's an issue downtown here. I don't always agree with some of the city zoning. But uh, <clears throat> what I'm curious about, though, and this is not in the pure purview of this panel, but I'm just curious. The roadway that you're creating, the drive through, yeah. Um, is there any? Is that wide enough for parking on the side for guest no. parking? No, no, it didn't look like. It. Not so not. is there no guest parking within this? Well, some of the room? units have enough space in front of the garage door. Not all of them. I mean, you know, people. You, you know how necessity is the mother of invention. That's that's, that's what I would say about parking <laughs> on this site. So part of the problem, and Jim can go on hours about it is Phillips Place you can park all day long so people park there and walk into town and work all day or take the train and leave their car so the residents have a problem right. <clears throat> um, they raise a concern about guest parking but we provided as Charles said one and a half space per unit where none were required so we think we've taken care of residents not there's no guest parking on the property And, and this, I think this is a, an important one because this is the view down Holly Street from Grid Street. Um, you, you see sort of the traditional brick three-story uh, masonry architecture on the right. You see our buildings on the left kind of stepping up the hill and, and with that additional setback from Holly Street deferring the edge to, to, to the public way. Um, and it also, it also gives uh, light view and sort of breathing space to, to the church. I mean, this is actually taken from a photograph, and so, the, the, and so during the summertime, that, that church is obscured by a tree, but six, six, or seven, six or eight months out of the year, you'll get a nice view right on of the church through there. And so it really creates, um, I think, a nice gateway between the Central Business District and, uh, and, and the, uh, the URC District beyond. Um, with, with our building splaying out um, and creating opening and deference to the church and to that view. So it really becomes, I think, a, I think a nice gateway. Um, and this is an interesting view because as you go down Hawley Street, everything on the right side is commercial. There's no residential on the right side. There's 
the antique shop and the post office on the left, and then our project. So it's central business. Had we designed a four-story brick building, it would look like it was part of downtown, but it would look terrible from the other side. So the challenge for the designers was something that felt residential for the homeowners that worked its way into the residential neighborhood, but still looked appropriate and scale from the central business side. And we think they did a great job with the design. Can we see the elevations again of the of the Holy, the side facing Holy Street with, with the commercial elevation and the alternate? Yeah, so here we are. Let me just zoom in on it a little bit for you. Yeah. Because what you've done with that elevation is you've kind of enhanced it over the, compared to the rest of the side elevations of these buildings that are facing up. Yeah, that was done specifically because it faced Holly. Yeah. So it, if you look at historic Northampton, it's very similar to the one on the left. It's a right. central entry with a two-story portico. And then a lot of the homes in the neighborhood are off-centered as the one on the right with the same port of port, sort of portico entry. No, I, I appreciate that rather than just the, the, that simple elevation with the awning windows. You know, yeah, with the clear stories, it wouldn't have worked. Street. So that's the end of the presentation. I'm happy to try to answer any other questions you have. <clears throat> I think I kind of voiced a few of my issues. Uh, I, I, you know, again, I'm, you know, style and design is personal, and we're not here to project our, our personal styles, but to just meet with the uh, requirements, you know, of, of the committee. So. And you said the garages are going to be hidden, basically, with by. Well, they'll be they'll be obscured um, by. I, I wouldn't go so far as to say hidden, but they they will be obscured from the Bridge Street um, sort of view shed by by the, by that by that fencing and by the and by uh, planting of trees along along. So there's a larger cane wall on. Yeah. In the back of the post office. This yeah. is up above that. Yeah, so this sits, it does, I mean, that, that retaining wall goes from like, what, like maybe two feet high, uh, eight, eight or nine feet high yeah. along that. Along that and you can side. kind of see it on the very left. That's the driveway coming out of the post office, and then that gray is the retaining walls that starts to go east on the site. So it, it, it raises, as Charles said, by the time you get to our last building, it's probably 10 feet above Holly Street elevation. But so as you're going down your drive street, there driveway, um, the grade there, on um, let's say if you're heading in on the left, the grade at the retaining wall, is that grade like virtually close to the height of the retaining wall? No, it's a little below. And then there's a fence the entire way as well. There's, there's going to be another retaining wall at the very east side to make the grades work. To, we wanted to save those two large trees. So, so the, you're setting a fence inside the retaining wall. There's an existing safety. fence on the retaining wall right now that the post Who's office on? must have put there. And we're going to put the plantings on our side of the fence. And then the mountable surface that goes up along the road is the best way to describe it is the, the roundabout at the south end of Pleasant Street. You know how they've got that stamped concrete that looks like bricks so the trucks tires can go over. Right. That's what that'll be, as Charles said, it's to make sure the ladder truck makes it, but it serves as a, a pedestrian space to get people out of the road. So that's that beige color, the, the gray is the driveway, and then that's that whole mountable surface is that sort of beige area. If we had, if we had the truck turning temple, you see how how elegantly the, the truck radius sits within uh, that whole geometry. Then the other thing to note is the right of way on the upper right part, um, to accommodate the, the owner of that property, we agreed to make it one way in only, so it would have minimal use. It'll probably be the, those last two buildings coming home. Otherwise, they'll have to go out in and out of Holly Street. And that was intended for her, but also to try and minimize the traffic that we put onto Phillips Place. To be clear then, that short driveway hitting Phillips, it's into your private Correct. only. In only. Not out. Correct. Okay. And it's not on the parcel. I mean, it's, it's not owned by. It's an easement. Yeah. yeah. But that's also required by the fire department, that easement, just for safety. 
They actually, they, they actually they, no, turn we, around. We, we designed it so that the ladder truck can actually turn around at the end of that private drive. You see there's a little <laughs> paved area. At or the very turn. Right. So they, the, they, they can actually turn around. They can't make it out to its place with the big truck. They right. can't make the turn. Right. So that they can get in and out. That's a long way for a, a dead end road though. I'm not sure, that, you know, for emergency vehicles. We, we probably could have done it that way, but it wasn't to the, the buyer's benefit. Once the, the fire truck goes in, does it have to back out? No, no, I was no. just explaining. We, we created a turnaround space. space. So again, it, it drives all the way in here, and then it does like a, like a five-point oh. turn, and then it can get out. So we, we spent quite a bit of time with the fire department to confirm it worked. And good drivers. Yeah, and good drivers, <laughs> yeah. Well, this is interesting. Well, um, this, uh, our, yeah, one second. Uh, the way the formality of the meeting works, do we close our questions and open it to the public? You don't need to close yours. You can just uh, um, open it up for any public comment, and okay. then that can be incorporated into your conversation before you officially close the public hearing or anything kind of decision. Right, so I'll open up the uh, public for the meeting now if you have any comments or questions. I'll come to the podium. Yeah. And nearby is a joke in the Thank you very much. So, uh, for the record, you're supposed to identify yourself. My name is Jim Nash, I'm the Ward 3 City Councilor. And uh, I'd like to thank, first thank <clears throat> Carolyn for her due diligence in letting me know about this meeting so I could let constituents know. Um, I sent out an email over the weekend uh, to many of the people on Phillips Place. Uh, were included in that, and um, so um, people were well informed. And I, I understand you got a letter from Maria Tomasco. Yeah. And yes. when was that? Over. The um, it was just prior to last week's meeting. Um, okay. In anticipation of that meeting happening on last Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I didn't get a copy of it, okay. so uh, I'm not. I, I do know from the hearing. You know, uh, the hip before planning board that her concerns had to do with the colors of the building. She didn't think those were consistent. And the other thing, she apparently referenced the height of the, the structures. And I can t say that part of what, what I see as the, the height issue is some of the um, existing structure on Phillips Place are actually shorter. One has an Italianate roof that's right near the, the church, so it doesn't have the the added height, and some of the others are also uh, older and have that uh, less of a, a, a roof showing. So that that could be part, that is part of the concern about the height of the building. Although I think the height of these buildings is generally consistent with a lot of the housing in the area. Um, and just so you know, that letter is in the public um, file cabinet, so it's on. Um, out there. Okay. Well, I'm trying to speak for my constituents are in here, and uh, and I think also that the fact that some of them aren't here and that they haven't written you um, also indicates something. So I I'm just saying that for you as you make your decision. There's not a public outcry against you know what's going on here, and I also want to say in terms of the the um, the two elevations on the Holly Street side. You know, the, you know, one way or the other, it's it's pretty much, it, it, as far as I'm concerned, that's fine. And I haven't heard any pushback from neighbors <coughs> concerning that. Um, and I also want to thank Andrew and his uh, group for uh, also doing a lot of outreach. There's been a lot of contact with, with the community around this project. So this, you're, you're not going to hear a public outroar that they weren't informed or weren't included. So. As far as Maria's letter, you know, we don't have any regulation over color. Oh, okay. Right. That's, you know, change it when you want it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, and then the, the height is obviously within the zone, so that's not that's out of our control as well. Right. So. I, just, I was just clarifying yeah. what their their position for yeah. so. so. So it's good. It's good news. In other words, you're... I wouldn't say constituents are 100 percent you know, that, that there's some concern. It's a big project. It's going into 
uh, uh, you know, a, a, an older neighborhood that people are concerned about it, and uh, understandably. But in terms of where they can actually push back and against, you know, they, they, they're, they're kind of limited in terms of that. So hopefully a project like this revitalizes the neighborhood as well. Yes, I will say this, that people are, are, are glad that something's going on here and that this, uh, that the property will be used in a way much better than way. It's abandoned right now and there's all sorts of activity that goes on there. So um, nobody's ever completely happy. So, <laughs> so that's what I got. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from our board? Um, as I said, it's not my style, but I respect what the office is trying to do, and I don't feel it's worth the labor. I'd, I'd like to say about that that this is in a transitional area. So if these windows were going to be put on Main Street, I would have a different opinion mm -hmm. about them. But I think for where they're going, I, I have no problem with it at all. Because it, it's, it's a transitional area. And it's fairly well obscured from public eye, really. You know, I mean, being behind the post office and set back there. So. I think on that note, just, it, you know, we've been giving um, feedback periodically about where we are in the form-based code um, process. And so we, I mean, one of the things that the um, we've been discussing with the consultants is treating different um, portions of the um, central business district differently as it relates to design because there are different characteristics that still make up the downtown but are very different um, on the side streets than they are on the main um, corridor of Main Street and, and that came in Pleasant intersection. So um, that speaks to sort of your comment about how Holly Street's different. So in, in terms of <clears throat> Um, in terms of my reaction to the plan, the old, it, I, I think the form, you know, the second version of the commercial, what was going to be the commercial space, would look a lot better if the windows on the second floor looked more like the other one. So um, uh, I would, um, I, if you, I, I would make a motion that reflected that if you're ready for it. Oh, can you so you carry that pattern. You're saying carry the pattern that's on the um, the Bridge Street side of that building across on the second floor. Um, Charles, can you about that elevation again one more time? I appreciate it. that you were trying to um, show more of an asymmetrical um, version of that because you're sliding the um, essentially the portico over. Right. So you wanted the windows to balance over the portico. Right. And keep the left side. Um, right. Yeah. Well, as the plan is currently configured right now on the second and third floor, um, on the third floor, that we're, we're, we're talking about creating another window as a laundry area. But Bob, what happens is the floor plan changes then. Yeah. The, the, no, that long hallway next to the garage goes away, so we get two cars. So the floor, yeah, yeah, the stairs so change, that. and yeah. that's driving the window configuration. Right. And so, yeah. So in this in this area right here, on, on the third floor, this is laundry, and then on the, on the second floor, this is an elevator and sort of a pantry powder room. So it's not really there's no functional reason to put windows there um, or practical way to do it. So we would. In order, if it would, we'd redesign the unit. 
we have to we, we have to sort of redesign the floor plan. Well, that's why that's why I asked you about it before is whether it would be whether there was some reason why there couldn't why there couldn't be more windows on the second yeah, and third. That's the reason why. Well, and and what we didn't mention that I think is important because these are not going to be inexpensive, um, and we expect people of our generation to be potential buyers. Um, all of the units will have the option for a personal elevator within, because it's it's two flights up from the garage to the master bedroom. Yeah, I noticed that little. And that that's what happens in that floor plan in that blank area. Okay. These are all the potential elevator shafts. Right. Say. Yes. You know, it's again, like I said before, design is personal. You know, and I like I'm becoming more traditional in my ways in age, and. These are contemporary, but I have I have to respect what you're trying to put out, put out, yeah. you know. And with your, uh, I'm not going to oppose it, you know. So. Thank you. Well, what? given now that I understand, there's a good reason for why the windows look like they are. Are you ready for a motion? History will tell in 20 years what we think. Of. I'm trying to picture what the windows look like in the brick building across the street on Holly. Oh, let me get see if I can get a picture of that. Uh, I mean, you wanted the concept of openness and light and not to break up the window patterns yeah. at all in a traditional manner. Right. Uh, so here the building is directly across the street. Uh, we can zoom in on those. So these these are these are like six over six double hungs, which which are actually um, uh, sort of uh, for, 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 for the time in this the period of this building is kind of it's an industrial kind of actual. Well, who knows if these windows are actually period windows? I mean. That's what they are, they're double hungs, six over six. Um, so, and, and their guidelines do have very specific um, criteria for more of the um, traditional um, theme commercial type of building, or even in that case, maybe a mill building, versus a, a transitional residential building. There aren't any specifications about the same kind of window patterning and treatment um, for residential style buildings. So, um, just another piece to consider. I mean, this one does a, this building's a real mix. It's got some storefront picture glazing. Yeah. It looks like it's got, you know, a casement here. This, this, this may be a double hung. These look like awnings or something. So it's a, it's a, it's a potpourri. That was pre-Central Business Architecture Guidelines. <laughs> <laughs> pre-Central Business yeah. Architecture Guidelines. <laughs> Definitely. Um, so that's what's going, that's what's, Right across the street. So when and then so if you're um, done taking public comment, you do a public hearing and then um, deliberate and make your decision. So I'll ask, there is is there any more public comment? No. So the public session is closed. We have to make a motion. I, I move that we close the public session. You have to say all in favor. All in favor. Okay. Opposed? <laughs> okay. So unless either of you have any other questions, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the project as presented, and that in the event that the city adopts form-based zoning, that we approve the alternate design for the facade facing Holly Street. Does this all have to be unanimous? It does. Uh, sorry, yes, for um, for the sake of um, this meeting, because you're at the minimum quorum, then the vote um, to approve. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. It's um, it's a majority of the quorum, so two out of three, um, based on the um, statutory guidelines for the committee. I'll second. Do you want 
to say something about that? No, on reservation, um, I guess I'm leaning towards more traditional windows. I understand your, uh, you know, your point of making this truly a transitional building. Um, but um, I'm comparing this to uh, the new condominiums on the curve of is it Pomeroy, where I believe they have more traditional, you know, windows, even though it's more modern. Um, and so that was my. But the motion is is passed anyway, correct? With right. the majority. Yep. So, sure. Any other? Yes. Any other business? Um, no, I, I don't have any. Can I raise one thing concerning the demolition business? Is yeah. there? Is there some chance that the city council is going to be taking up this um, issue again? Because I know my wife sits on the historical yeah. commission, and she's mentioned something about that they're going to possibly be looking at this whole issue more. Right? So there is a discussion um, by the historical commission about modifying its rules. Um, we certainly haven't um, discussed internally any changes to this um, very distinct piece of it. I, when the Central Business Architecture um, Guideline and the whole process for Central Business Architecture Review was created, it was very purposeful to separate those two jurisdictions. And the, the reason being um, that the focus was really trying to um, allow change in downtown Northampton and not be um, um, focused on historic preservation per se, but really about the downtown character and creating a walkable um, um, downtown for um, the community. So it certainly wouldn't, isn't anything that we would recommend or that we're pushing for at this point. However, there are other changes that the Historical Commission is looking at. And I, 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 that question might be worth looking at. And I could. I, I could imagine a situation, well, I, I, I don't know what the property would be, but I, I could imagine a situation would come up that um, uh, we'd feel differently about the property. I mean, if, if the Diocese of Springfield wanted to demolish the rectory for St. Mary's, for instance, you know, that, that might have a lot more historical value than the rectory at St. John Cantius does, and, and we might want to, you know, we might want to be able to review that. So the interesting thing about that one is, uh, is it's the only property in the entire city that has two overlays. Basically, it's the Central Business Architecture Review oh. and the Elm Street Historic Well, Street I was Review. just picking an so, I was just trying to pick an example. Yeah. Right? So that one actually is different because the Elm Street it's in the Elm Street district as well. Um, but and you know just to talk about the um, one of the other sides of this is that by creating an allowance for um, redevelopment of properties in downtown and the opportunity for reinvestment um, the fewer impediments to that to allow sort of transition over time with the evolving economy then that makes it easier for the reuse of buildings and in this case in particular and as well as St. Mary's you know there's a large very historic church on this property. The idea, the applicant is still attempting to try to reuse that, but this facilitates that in that it provides some phase development to um, bolster the ability of rehabbing, potentially right. renovating that large building, which has a much bigger um, footprint and presence on the property than that rectory. Right. So um, you can look at it that way as well. Um, very articulately said, but th from the developer's side, I can tell you that if we faced a potential one-year demolition delay, we never would have put property under agreement. Uh, it was approved by the planning board for another development that never happened. So um, we, did, we need, as a city, we need to balance right. reasonable um, historic preservation with economic development. Right. I, I have, understand that. Have you purchased a church also? It's part? part, yes, it will be part of, if we make the purchase, it's under agreement now, it would be the parking lot, the church, and everything that we permitted tonight. And, and, you, you, and you have to give the bishop the right to reject your use of the building, right? Is that? Um, there are some requirements, but they've deconsecrated the church. 
They expect it to be knocked down. That's not our plan. I should be very clear that um, we are not sure of the reuse, but our, our goal is to reuse it in some capacity. Just know the business hand. Does anyone want to make a motion to close the meeting? I'll second that emotion. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks a lot.